Hello, my name is JP Hofseth. I'm with Team Loose Cannons, and I'll be doing a playthrough of my level four milestone one. Opening from Loose Cannons under Builds, Windows, Cyber City Revision 1168670. We're going to go to Level Select. We're going to open up our drone factory level. So on the level, I have it set to default to first person mode. Um, and I set the player off in this little area that teaches them what to do. If you notice, this says target practice, <clears throat> range rules, draw your weapon, mouse scroll up, down, aim at targets, right mouse button, and then left mouse button to fire, so. Bullseye. When you hit the bullseye, that happens. That only happens at the targeting range. But the main purpose I did this was, if you notice the targets, they have this material that makes it look like they're flashing. And when you come over here, so do the targets that are needed to open the doors. So the basic way this mechanic works is there's a blueprint for the door, um, for the target that connects to the blueprint for the door. So when the player shoots in this, the target three times, it tells the door to open. The door then tells the indicator that it needs to be green. And if you notice, the material is also on the drones here. So if you look at the eye, it has that same flashing material. So if the player shoots the drone right in the eye, it destroys it immediately. Otherwise, the drone usually has three hits. So if you hit it anywhere but that eye, it'll take a couple shots to bring down the drone. And as you can see, the conduit shows you which, how the target is attached to which door. But I'm going to go this way. Oops, can't even climb my own stairs. And I added um, some clouds out there. Uh, it's pretty much just a fog effect that one of the other um, team members is using on their board. I used it for, or their level, I used it for the clouds on mine. <clears throat> I also used a couple other things from some of the other teammates, but we'll look at a few of those later. So here's the first part where there's a target that goes to this door and there's a target over here that leads off. Now I put the window here so that you could see that it's leading to the next door. Um, but as we get further into the, the level here, it'll actually be more difficult to see which conduit is going to which door, kind of making it a little bit of a puzzle and the player has to pay attention to where they're going. Whereas on these ones, notice how the indicator is blacked out. These doors don't operate. And that's to indicate that. Along with, if you do follow the conduit, it takes you to a target that isn't operable. Now, the elevator works on a basic overlap. So when the player gets close enough to the console, it reads how many viruses the player has picked up. If they haven't picked up enough viruses, a HUD pops up that says, collect more viruses. Um, otherwise you get the override and it takes us up here and now notice it'll change to six once the door opens. There's actually just a collider right about here at the top here that uh, tells the level that the elevator has reached that point the players reach that point and to upgrade the viruses collected now the elevators also act like a valve there's no way to go back down so once the player gets here they can't go back so that keeps the player going forward but as we get up here we now have an upgrade kiosk this is one that we made for the mvp level for 
our last sprint. Um, and I helped design this as well, but uh, I, I liked implementing it on my level because I wanted the player to be able to buy the upgrades to show how the offset is actually diminished the more upgrades they have. So if you go over here, hover over the icon, it says upgrade weapon damage by 10 and then reduce aim offset by 25. So it brings the offset more narrower. So as the, when the player buys more and more of those, the shots will be closer and closer to the middle of that radical, kind of showing a progression or, or better weaponry as it were, and helping the player with the aiming. But now, in this area, the targets take... You need two targets to open a door. And some of the drones are now shielded. So you can no longer just one-shot them. You now have to bring down the shield before you can one-shot them. We'll start off going this way. This way um, is kind of a mix between offices and some storage. I built this area based off of influence, uh, kind of a layout of a warehouse I worked in for quite a while. I wanted it kind of to be similar. Um, of course, I took a little bit of liberties with it in order to make it more interesting for a game. But uh, you have the basic bins in rows and rows and rows and rows and rows in the warehouse I worked in. And you could walk almost two or three miles of rows like this. Um, and, and that's all it was. And so I wanted to kind of showcase that in here as uh, something make it a little bit more realistic and then I will this is where the conduits and the targets get a bit more of a puzzle so you can see the conduit coming from that target and then going there in that corner these targets going over here and connecting to that target so you don't really see any of those four connected to a door but you do see a conduit coming out of that area connecting to that door and same over here it's coming out of that wall and connecting to that door so now the player has to explore a bit to find out what targets connect to those doors. So if you follow them around, they all eventually do connect to a door. You just have to figure out which ones they connect to. So I'm just going to go ahead and open all of them. still have a few doors that only take one target because I didn't feel the need to make every door take two targets at this point. Um, some of the more rudimentary doors that aren't really part of this puzzle only take one target, um, but the ones that are essential to that puzzle where the player is trying to get to the next virus, they all take two tired. They all take two targets. the virus. We just have to get over there. But in order to do that, we have to hit this target too. call this area the offices it's more more like kind of a little maze I, I, I built a couple little mazes throughout the level um, because I I didn't want it to be clear and cut like an, an actual warehouse would be because that would be kind of dull to go through so I made made 
the level into a maze. Now this area was going to have a giant machine in the middle that made drones, but we ran out of time for that. So let's talk a little bit more about the aim here. When you right click, you have this animation that pops up with the radical and shows the aim. And if you notice, it's not quite on point, um, but the radical is is where the uh, where the hit scan goes. I, I opted for hit scan versus projectiles um, for use in this game. Um, originally went with projectiles, but projectiles, of course, you always have the issue of projectiles uh, wanting to keep going until their life is diminished, or you have to set it up so that when a projectile hits something, um, it immediately destroys itself. Whereas with the hit scan, whatever the hit scan hits first, I can apply damage to, or if it hits something besides something that needs damage applied to it, it won't apply damage to it. So I don't have to worry about them necessarily going through walls, because even though the hit, the, the line trace from the hit scan will go through the wall, it won't affect anything past the first object it hits. So now we're gonna go this way, show you the other two areas. Uh, this area is much more of shelving in a warehouse um, with giant boxes and then freight doors with trailers pulled up to them. Still going for that warehouse type feel, factory type feel because if you make things in a factory, something's got to ship it out. Um, so you, you're going to have large doors with trailers hooked up to them at some point inside a factory in order to load trucks or load trailers or ships or whatever it might be, depending on the era or genre or um, time period. Even if it's if you're going fantasy, you're going to have you know a spot to load the carts, to load the to load the horses or something so uh, these bounce pads are actually taken from another team members board uh, Alfredo Reyes he made uh, these bounce pad mechanics for his level and his level if you haven't had a chance to play it the bounce pad level is very very fun um, he does a great job of setting up a masterful map with these bounce pads <clears throat> and making it uh, very much of a challenge for the player. I'm just kind of jumping through real quick because even though there's things to find in here and things to get in here, just doing a quick playthrough for you guys. So, and of course, there's the last virus. So let's get out of here. I wanted to do a bit of a a uh, maze in here and get a bit of a feel of claustrophobia in here. I think I hit that pretty well. Um, if you've ever worked in a warehouse in stacks, as generally something like this might be called, um, usually they're fairly narrow. They're just wide enough for a forklift or maybe two to get through in order for them to stack things on the shelves and just enough for that and nothing else. <laughs> they don't tend to leave a whole lot of room. And I figured more in a futuristic environment, especially, they'd have even less room because you don't need as much room for more of a futuristic, probably, drone that's putting things on the shelves and it doesn't need the person operating it, so it has a bit more precision on it. So I made this really tight on purpose and I was wanting something to, to you know complete the maze and then when I found Alfredo's board and he had done the um, bounce mechanic I asked him if I could use it for my level and he cleared you know was more than happy for me to put it on my level as well so boom all right and then we walk out this way now the trailers the way I set up the trailers was uh, interesting um, I didn't do multiple targets for the trailers. Uh, generally, most trailer doors, they're fairly easy to open. There are, you know, certain safety precautions that are always taken in opening trailer doors. But I, I set them up so that there were only one target each. Um, now, the interesting thing on here is I don't know which one is going to have the virus. 
I set up a spawn, uh, a spawner that will put the virus. Uh, there's a spawner in four of these trailers that it randomly chooses to put the virus in each time. So each time you play, the spawner may be in a different trailer. So I have no way of knowing right now which trailer that's going to be in. And that's by design. I wanted it to be where the player has to kind of explore a little bit um, to find where the viruses would be. I wanted the level to be a little bit of a maze-like, even though it's very formulaic as far as four big areas. Five if you include the downstairs. So it looks like it's going to be in this last one. Now the other trailers I didn't open all do have collectibles and different things in them. Usually the drones are patrolling back and forth. I just probably got it while it was at the end of its patrol cycle on that side. But we're going to keep forging forward. To the last elevator here. buy some more upgrades so the upgrades if you notice you can see how many you have down here in the corner three weapon upgrades one health upgrade so our aim has now gotten even tighter if you notice we have less of an offset from the radical as we shoot and if you dumb fire there's a greater offset than when you just aim I wanted there to be a difference between aiming and just firing, um, so we made sure to made sure to put the aim to narrow the offset, as it were. And now we have drones to kill. So the end of the level is the spawners coming out of the factory, and you having to go around take out these drones. Uh, there's still an upgrade kiosk up here, so as you kill some of these drones and get the uh, get the collectibles, you can still go and upgrade. Notice the first wave there was no shields, the second wave there's shields. And so on wave three here, the shields are a little bit stronger. It's not a dramatic difference between the two. Um, it's just a few more hits on the second or on the last waves here, shields versus the first wave shields. Just in case I die. Then once all the drones are dead, the ship comes. Now the ship kind of looks like you might have to fight it, but it's coming directly onto the helipad. Um, and then drops the stairs. And as you come up to the stairs, you come across a level over, a collision overlap, and that's the end of the level. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope that helps explain... Uh, some of the concept of the aim mechanic and targeting mechanic I was going for. I didn't want a simple door with a key that you had to find. I wanted it to be um, something you had to aim at, something that uh, took time for the player versus just combat. Um, I wanted this level to focus on the aiming and the shooting, and I think I got that accomplished fairly well. So again, thank you for watching this, and I look forward to working more on this project.